Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Real Hazardous. Today, I gotta work, which sucks. But, my dad and Kayla are gonna go out sea bass fishing with our buddy, Captain Chris Clifton, and his son, Wyatt. So they're gonna go uh, try to catch some sea bass, see what else they can catch, and uh, go from there. I was going to say, you're trying to trick me. Go give me a 16. Wanna, oh, they got the same exact setup. What do you think, Kevin? Yeah. You're going to give me a 16 and say, oh, here's, here's your good weight right here. If I get people I don't like, that's what I do. I give them a heavy weight. <laughs> Make them crank it. I see, yeah, man, this, this is the perfect weight for out here. Mom out there, how come your weight sits smaller than mine? I see, because I want you to get this fish. <laughs> I probably won't even get a bite with these light weights, and you're going to catch them all. It was a beautiful day for them, really nice conditions, of course, during the week. But they head out about 15 or so miles to some natural bottom, really great places that we've caught sea bass in the past. Sea bass typically bite really well in the winter. Uh, these, you know, winter to spring months, January, February, March, uh, it seems like as, as the weather warms up, they don't, you know, bite as well. I don't know if the bigger ones kind of move out. But uh, it's a really good time of year for them. Did you ever eat those? What? Got him one. Fish on! Snake fish! What'd you get? Lizard fish. Bring him on up here. We'll make cut bait out of him. You want him? Yeah. yeah it's good cut bait. Right. You know, I've personally been diving, and you know, in recent years, the sea bass limit um, has gotten tighter and the fish had to get bigger. So there are tons of sea bass down there, but a lot of them are small. So you may have to go through a lot of fish. Just have your descending device or venting tool or whatever you need for your area and uh, you know, just be ready to release them. Now there's a couple tricks that I feel like help catching the bigger sea bass. So for example, on this trip, Kayla started out with some smaller hooks, but she switched to the bigger hooks and started doing better. See, the reason I like bigger hooks is because sea bass have a really big mouth. It's not like a trigger fish or even a vermilion snapper. They got a big mouth, so they'll eat a big bait. So what I like to do is get a big chunk of bait and a big circle hook, let's say relatively big, you know, like a, a seven alt or something, because it keeps all the little fish from swallowing it. Now you're gonna have your bait down, if you're fishing with braid, you're gonna feel grunts, you're gonna feel a little sea bass, you're gonna feel all these little fish pecking at it, and that's okay. Just wait, wait for it to pull. In the old days with J hooks, you'd probably be jerking and just catching all these small fish. But the big hooks help you to be a little more selective. And that's good, you know, you really only want the bigger ones anyways. It's gonna save you time. If you're catching a little fish, then you're wasting time not catching keeper fish. That's my tip to you, is use those bigger circle hooks. Sea bass. He might, he might be big enough. See, throw him on the scale there. 13. 13 or bust, right? You got a good one there, didn't you, Wyatt? Oh, Why you should be getting bit here. There's a bunch of them down there. All right, let's drop down there. And what we'll do is, um, if I need to let more out, if it starts dragging, but I don't think it's going to drag much. So you're on the high side of the ledge again? Yeah. If we drift back, because I figured out, it looks like the windshield on the boat on here uh -huh. is like where the transducer, that's straight under us where that windshield is. Uh, okay. So if we drop back a little bit more, we'll drop off the deep edge. Okay. So, but we're right on the high edge now, and I'm marking the edge. There should be. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the kettle's got hooked up. Yeah, the kettle's got our getting. I barely oh, got that. What's going on? Let's go for two. I'm going for two. Right here, two. I got one. Looking for two. Oh, yeah. The kettle's got that one. Mm -hmm. Bottom of a keeper. Right? Yeah, bottom one is definitely a keeper. Green, that's that's a top one head. might do it, but that bottom one will definitely do it. Now you have to let her in. They were looking for trigger fish with these little hooks. Yeah. All right, Kevin, I, I, I saw your two and I got two. I think one of mine's bigger than yours. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Caleb got you whooping on that one, Dad. Yeah. Right. Dang, the hook broke. Yeah, really? Yeah. They yeah, looped in there, aren't snapped they? Snapped it, yeah. He's right at it. Bottom loop. I've got some sabikis if we want to put some in. I gotta shake this out now. 
Let me get inside that for me. Is that? Is that a, that's a good one there. That's a, that's a, that's a genuine, isn't it? Yeah, that's a genuine. Mm. Sea bass is nice. I didn't have any bait on that hook. <laughs> I only have one out. Might have just got my bait. Give it a second. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Not that, that far yet. Walker come by or minute walk. No, we're we're right on it. We're marking fish. I mean, we could possibly to get on the deep side where we're almost an eighty now. I turn the motors and it's swinging a little bit. There you go. Get him, Jay Jay. That size, you'd have to go to the big cooler, wouldn't you? Yep. Yep. See, bass, I like to use big slabs up. There we go. Let's get the fish there. A good sea bass or a little grouper. A bigger snipper. A little grouper. Like a oh, nice. Also, my dad caught some red grouper, which is a really good sign. Years ago, I remember we were diving. It's like the grouper got. They got kind of sick, They're real lethargic. You could actually reach out and touch them. Um, you know, fish get sick too. But it seems like they're kind of coming back. That population's rebounding, that's good. Of course, they're not in season this time of year, but uh, it's good to see that they're, you know, doing well and the population's rebounding. We're, we're right on the deep side of the ledge, right on the ledge. That's why you got a grouper, I think. It was probably hiding up in that ledge. Uh -huh. And I, I got a, a whole cast net that I cut all the lead out of yeah. it, threw the lead in there. Oh, yeah, there are these some that you made here, JJ? Yeah, I made all these. If you want me to make your mark, thank you, Helen. That might be fresh enough. <laughs> well, maybe we need to stay here. I'm gonna go stand over here by the and catch them. <laughs> y'all make it easy for I just drop down the base, y'all take it off. Get them on a squid or cut bait. Cut bait. Yeah, right, so tell us how you're doing it, Kayla, so you can all try this. Right. <laughs> All right, so I'm down here with, I got this two all circle hooks on mine. Kayla was using the six or seven all the bigger hooks earlier. The bigger hooks are a lot easier to get off than the little ones. But um, I'm down there now. It's like, oops, that was a good hit there. The little one's messing with it right now. I want to see that one slam it. All right, I've got a mixture of cut bait and squid on mine. Oh no, he came off right here. What was it? I don't know, I couldn't see him. He Something came off small, right, right. right here. Some little fish. <laughs> so no, the little fish never get away. Got away. Oh, it, it wasn't a keeper. Yeah, had the little baby. It was a release. This was like a sea bass here. Uh, you see where he came from, JJ? Right that big that pile hill. right there. There's a big pile of them down there. Uh oh, oh. Hershey, Hershey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you got a good piece of fish, Kevin. Oh, yeah. Bring him over here. That's obviously that's good. You were messing with that jig for a while. Look at this one, guys. Don't. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice, JJ. That's good. About the size of a grouper there. Yeah. I wish we could have 20 of that size. Yeah, you ain't kidding. It's your big one because you've been getting the big ones anyhow. So. Is that already waiting on you? Uh-huh. We'll see if it's the rod or the... The person. Nope, 
or actually there's another piece of this ledge that's bigger I want to go try. Okay. It came on the screen when I went towards this. Uh-huh. The next one. You got washed down on your boat too? Oh yeah. yeah. You gotta have that. Switch. Okay. Okay. Get on the slab. Nice one. So another thing that was really helpful, first time going after sea bass and having Seymour maps at our disposal. The Seymour maps is really helpful, it shows you exactly where the reefs are. In the old days, you just drive along and you mark a spot and you mark it and eventually you notice a pattern like a line and that'd be a ledge. Now you can just see it instantly in you know, a bunch of other you know, ledges and reefs and wrecks that we never knew existed in the area. So that's what they were doing. They were using that to work along the uh, ledge. A lot of times you can just drift it. That's kind of my preferred preference. But you can anchor, and uh, even better if you've got like the Rodan or Spot Lock, that's uh, even better too You know, when you start catching good sea bass, you know, stay in that position and work them. But just keep in mind that these sea bass will move around too, so be ready to work the ledge. Another really cool thing that I really enjoy is they put down the Go Fish Cam so they could see exactly what was going on on the bottom. Go Fish Cam also helps you learn about the fish, helps you to see how your rig is doing and compares, and we've got some crazy cool fish footage over the years with it. So check out here, you know, just the, the sea bass and the ledge rawn, how it compares to Seymour or Depth Recorder and how these fish are biting. Bang, that's a good fish right there. Oh. Water's really clean today, too. Tank tops, that's what catches fish, tank tops. That's it. If this is a sea bass keeper, it feels like a sea bass now. Double, double header. Now, unfortunately, you're also going to catch a lot of red snapper. There are a lot of red snapper out there. Government doesn't believe it, but trust me, more snapper than probably, you know, 100 or more years. I don't know. Crazy amount. You're going to catch a lot of them. Just be ready to safely release them. Oh, he's got a, got a tailor with him. You don't fling him off when you put him in the boat. Come back or down up. There you go, it's good right there. The first time. Little bit short. That's a sea bass. He's a death lake keeper. Why get a big one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Snapper. Oh, 
snappers. It's just never in the sea bass. But. You should have a good video there, Kayla. We'll have a good supper, won't we? Oh, yeah. Or two? A couple sandwiches in here. Hi guys, we went out there, tried it for a little while this morning. By 11 o'clock, we had limited out on our sea bass. We had um, 28. I made some real nice sea bass. And uh, of course, the usual red snappers and stuff like that. But uh, overall, uh, a real good day. Night was pretty consistent all day long. Um, what do you think, uh, Captain Chris? I think the bite was really good. I had a good time, man. Thanks for watching the video. We hope you guys enjoyed it and learned some things about catching sea bass. Don't forget to find us on other social media sites. We got Instagram, uh, Facebook, things like that. You know, follow us on there. We got other little shorts and reels and all kinds of footage and tips that we post. So we'd appreciate it if you follow us on that. If you are not a subscriber already, please subscribe. Check out our website. If you want any of our shirts, check that out. We got a lot of content coming your way. So we'll see you next time.